this show's aversion to college basketball is astounding to me. It's the conference tournaments are about to start. It's, it's a big time in college it's basketball. It's really frustrating because it's been a phenomenal college basketball season. And you'd be shocked. A lot of casual fans would be shocked to see who's sitting up uh, atop the top 25. A- Alabama, known as a football program, is one of the best basketball teams in the nation. They're number two behind Houston. That's right. What? The Houston Cougars are the number one team in the Ooh, nation. This could be a fun bit. Let's name the men's top 25 oh, and God. and get reactions from this room. Yeah, because a lot there's going to be a lot of... You guys aren't exactly making a great case. No, but it's... I, I don't it's watch a, a lot of men's guards. college basketball. To also, be fair, another sneaky thing that I discovered is TCU, I would put right there below Alabama as one of the most dominant athletic programs in the nation. They're good at everything. They're damn good at Everything. Well, when did Alabama get good at basketball? Because they went through Avery Johnson trying to get there, and I do not think of Alabama as a basketball school in any way. And we talked earlier in the show about the controversy engulfing their program right now, murder around their program. When did Alabama get good? Because it was not through Avery Johnson, and I don't think of Alabama as ever being top of the country good. You know what's really screwed me up about college basketball? We missed a March Madness. We missed an entire NCAA tournament. So a lot of people's analysis is a frame of reference that might be when they last paid attention to it, and so much time has passed. FSU is not a very good basketball team right now. They might have won the championship were not for the, the coronavirus pandemic eliminating the NCAA tournament there. The landscape has totally changed. Duke had a really bad team that year. I think they didn't make the tournament that year and then they made a deep run the ncaa is is very strange fau is ranked earlier this year fau is really good i made the argument that the miami heat are the third most interesting basketball team in the region right now behind you you had yes you didn't even have fau cracking that you had it um men's and women yeah because women they had all these uh, these expectations and they it's been such a battle and i really implore the audience to go check out some of the games at the watsco the women's games are way more physical than the men's way more physical the officiating is a disaster maybe that's why it's so physical oh my god jess is this a thing there's been really bad officiating just across the board this it's year. terrible i feel I, like the games are being fixed i feel like we could we could do like a top five list of the most surprising teams in the ap top 25 if you don't pay attention to basketball should we do this or well, yeah. this, will this alienate our basketball like, watching fans P- purdue is damn good we have never been the show. Northwestern uh, knocked off the number one team in the country last week. Jesus. They you should know, uh, Jessica, we have never seriously covered college basketball here. All we do during the tournament is make jokes. The excuse for that was always South Florida market has never cared about basketball. We're always dead last in the country of caring about college basketball. And we didn't want to do a show where we were just talking to all the coaches in a car wash two weeks before March Madness. You know what's crazy is I'm very excited Obviously, I'm so desperate for a winner, especially when they're in green and orange, that I'm really proud of my men's basketball team that's in sole possession of first in the ACC. Nationally, they'll tell me, you know what? ACC, garbage. I'm like, when did that happen? But I remember them saying this last year, and then two ACC teams made the final four. No, but they're saying it because North Carolina is a preseason number one, and when does that ever happen that North Carolina goes, or any school goes from preseason number one to never mind, you're probably not even good enough to be in the tournament with any relevance. But it's a single uh, elimination tournament. Maybe last year was the aberration, and this year it's closer to what it what it should you be. You want to cover this sport seriously around here? Well, no, it's random as hell, and I think I have a pretty good – uh, a pretty good idea of what the ACC is. And my natural prism is it's a hugely underrated conference. I still see uh, NBA bodies out there. I'm wowed by athleticism. I'm seeing really good basketball. But what the SEC is to football, apparently the Big 12 is to college basketball. And the Big 12 is insanely good. I know I sound like an idiot to a lot of people that are yes, like, yeah, yeah, the sky is duh, blue, duh. water is well, wet. W- welcome to college basketball. But you just started caring like that because your program. Big 12, good. Uh, well, but you are. Oh. Uh, I'll tell just, you. A you big just 12? became Zast. The Big 12, awesome. You uh, you have become. <laughs> my... I, uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking I'll call it the Big 13. Is that good? I need to explain to the audience. Mike Ryan has now. He has fallen deep into the clutches of the cult in Coral Gables. Uh, you, you've heard it around here in a way that's super annoying to the audience. 
but now he really cares because he's embedded in that little pocket of land where, oh, holy shit, their college basketball team might be good enough to be in a Final Four. Uh, because uh, whether you believe uh, Jim Beheim, he lost by 20 again last night, right? Uh, Jim Beheim saying Miami Who bought, bought a team now. Miami bought a team. You're more interested in what's happening around here. And now we're going to be the Homer show that cares about college basketball because you care about college basketball. That's usually how it works, well, isn't it? Well, no one wants to hear from you. Oh, my you. God. They lost at Clemson by, oh, by close to 20. They, they bought their team. I feel for you, Jim. Sorry. That must hurt to be Jim Beheim and the whole game has passed you by because everyone else realizes, wait a minute, I can play it somewhere that's not Syracuse, New York, and make them good at FAU and uh, be near the Blue Martini? A lot of teams run the 2-3 zone, too. Yeah. He doesn't even have that on college basketball anymore. One-trick pony, Jim. You're a one-trick pony. A legend. One-trick pony that lasted 30 years yeah, just no, running that trick. same trick. It was a great trick. You know the expression, there's a sucker born every minute? Yeah. We should change it to there's a NCAA – college coach saying something stupid every minute just yeah. every news cycle for the last infinity years is just one coach stepping in it and then the next that'd coach be a better in it, scroll the next that'd be a better espn it. scroll if we could Dude. just have uh, coaches stepping in nato it. stepped in it i've been talking to a couple of people jim and, stepped in it. and people like jim Beheim and nick saban i know these are different sports but these these really dominant programs that that got around a certain way they're having a really difficult time adjusting to what's going on right now. And specifically when it comes to the college ranks, you're seeing a lot of people leave college for the NFL. And you're like, yeah, that's the natural progression. That's the NFL is a, a tier above college in many respects are paying better than the NFL. So much so that the market for assistant coaches in the NFL has gone down because people are so desperate to get out of this Wild West college football world that they're just dying like a life raft to get to the NFL to get out of this insanity. 